Honorable the Chief Whip of the Opposition. Thank you very much, House Chair. In his first State of the Nation address since going to the country for his own electoral mandate, President Ramaphosa shared with us and the nation his dreams. Let me be clear, there is nothing wrong with dreams, provided they have a plan. For dreams without plans remain fantasies. The President is also not the only one who dreams. So while you, Mr. President, were dreaming of the fantastical city of Ramakandla, <laughs> with its bullet trains whizzing by, and its Brezhnev-era state-owned entities running the show, the young school leaver in Limpopo dreams of finding a job. The factory worker in Elberton dreams of the last time he had a decent job. The sick person lying in hospital in Kimberley dreams of proper care and getting better. The resident in Helenvale who dreams of a safe street, free of bullets, gangsters and drug peddlers. The mother in Mpumalanga dreams of just one night she can send her children to bed with a full tummy. For it's only in these dreams, Mr. President, that our citizens find temporary refuge from the woken horror and nightmare of unemployment, crime, poverty and struggle that is the daily life and existence for far too many of our citizens in this country. And for successive elections, these citizens have placed their dreams at the feet of successive ANC administrations. Like the lines of the Irish playwright William Butler Yeats, they have said, and I quote, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Trade softly because you tread on my dreams, unquote. And yet successive ANC administrations have done exactly the opposite. They have stamped out the opportunity. They have crushed the dreams and they have robbed the very lifeblood of their survival. And after the wasted decade of the Zuma years, and now with your own electoral mandate under your belt, what was needed more than anything was a good dose of brass tacks, hard reality and bold reforms. It's what the nation was desperate to hear. It's what we were desperate to hear last Thursday and what we were desperate to hear today. Now was the time for action, the clarion call to service, the rallying cry against corruption, the decisive demolition of the roadblocks to growth and prosperity. Instead, we got dreams and virtuous ends with 10-year sell-by dates. Basically, you say to us, Mr. President, for the next 10 years, don't call me, I'll call you. 10 years? We don't have 10 years. We don't exist in some utopian dream in which we can fluffily float for a decade. We're in the nightmare of immediacy. We're on a race against the clock to get our country working and get our people back to work. Dreams without plans are merely fantasies. And boy, did we hear a lot of those today. I'll start with the faux communist that we have in our ranks. I see who's been uh, delegated now to the NCOP, his colleagues in the NA couldn't wait to get rid of him. I mean, they're horrified he's popped up in the NCOP to terrorize us once a year at Sona once again. But frankly disingenuous, he says to us that the Zondo Commission was gifted to the country by the ANC. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. It was the result of a public protector report which made it as a finding. <laughs> nothing to do with you, Honorable Karim. Nothing. But like a walking, talking version of Pravda, he carried on with the rank dishonesty that has become the South African Communist Party. And isn't it amazing that he can stand here with his hands in his pockets, picking on the DA, picking on the EFF, tearing our manifestos to pieces. Where was your manifesto this election? You've never had the courage to put your ideas before the country and have them tested. You're a coward that hide under the petticoat of the ANC. And you talk about an identity crisis. Well, goodness me, 
If the DA's got an identity crisis, Honorable Karim, you guys have got schizophrenia on Olympian proportions. NDZ, JZ, um, Magashule faction, the Zuma faction, radical economic transformation, the New Dawn, every one of them. You guys can't even get together in a room and have a coherent conversation. And isn't it amazing? He criticizes the policies of the free market, the policies of ma the market. Well, the people in Venezuela, 3.4 million of them, aren't running away from our policies, Honorable Karim. They're running away from yours. The people, on, the people in Cuba, the people in Cuba can find anything that floats to try and get them across that dangerous crossing to Cuba because they're running away from the policies that he pronounces. Honorable Ndiwe Zulu is here. She arrived, you're looking like Michael Jackson. I was expecting, I was expecting thriller, but what we got today was smooth criminal. She spoke, she spoke, she spoke, she spoke a lot about the nuts and bolts. Well, there were a lot of nuts and I see she's bolted before we could have a, we could have a chance to have a go at her. Please speak through the chair. Sorry, my, can I just have my two seconds back, if you don't mind? Thank you. Got a lot to get through. I don't want to lose my time. Yeah. But let me just tell you this. We've shown where we govern that you can have schools that work, that you can have a strong, stable, growing economy that gives everyone a stake, that you can have clean and accountable government. But all of this requires courage and it requires resolve. And that's what worries us, Mr. President. It's what keeps people awake from their dream. The question on everybody's lips is, sir, do you have the courage and do you have the resolve? Because you're going to need it in bucket loads and you're going to have to demonstrate it far more than you have to date because you're up against it. The longer you fail to take hard decisions, the harder it's going to become to do so. The more you delay the deep reforms, the further the economy is going to drift away. The longer you pander to the corrupt and rotten in your party, the more the doubts are going to pile up. And Mr. President, heed this warning. Your Secretary General, Ace Magashule, is like a vulture that has flown in fresh from pricking the dry carcass of the free state. He is moving against you, Mr. President. He has deployed his minions in all their numbers into key positions into this parliament to provide a roadblock against your reforms and to weaken you up for the kill. And just like a vulture, he is perched at Latuli House, waiting, just waiting for that first carrion whiff of weakness that will signal the kill. Mr. President, you don't have to believe me when I tell you what a danger this man is to your agenda and what a danger he is to your organization. Because the next speaker, the next speaker, the Honorable Imbalula, had this to say in the run-up to your conference. He said, and I quote, Ace Magashule is a definite no-no. He will finish what is remaining of our organization. The longer you remain, the longer you remain agnostic, to the Magashule maneuvering, and the more you tiptoe around Ace Magashule, calling him my boss, telling us that without him you are nothing, the harder you stamp on the dreams of our citizens. Thank you. To the Honorable the Minister of Transport.